The Democrats are up and they're saying, oh, they're putting up signs like it's wonderful. It's a disaster. I actually talked with Paul and the group about just doing nothing for two years, and the Dems would come begging to do something because 17 is going to be catastrophic price increases. Your deductibles are through the roof. You can't use it. You can't use it. And they would come to us, except we have one problem. We have to take care of the American people immediately. Well, it looks like Obamacare is going to be scrapped by Congress, possibly as soon as March or April. But, and this is a reasonably big but, no one is that clear on what is going to replace it. And that's causing concern. Here's Nick Bryant with a report from New York. In New York City, the home of Donald Trump, it's estimated that 1.6 million people could lose their health coverage if the Affordable Care Act is repealed. That's one in five of the city's population. Things will stay in place. Our Among them, Donna Leslie, who suffers from asthma, sleep apnea, and an injured knee. She doesn't know what she'd do if she lost her Obamacare coverage. It would be a disaster for me. I have to have health care in order to survive. If I don't have that health care, if he gets rid of it, I'm dead in the water. No doubt. No doubt. It's not just adults that could lose their coverage, but as many as four million children. And doctors are also worried about the impact of existing treatments being interrupted. We're talking about millions of people. Across America, Dr. Dave Choksi says the human consequences of repeal would be dire. We're talking about people dying here. We're talking about people dying. Um, we're talking about people suffering as well. Uh, you know, a patient with high blood pressure who goes without their medicine for a few months is at higher risk for a stroke or a heart attack. Um, and a patient with cancer, you know, who had started treatment, um, an interruption in care would mean that, uh, that they're no longer able to get the chemotherapy or the radiation therapy or the surgery that they might need. Uh, so from that perspective, I'm, I'm very worried about the real consequences of, uh, uh, of what's playing out on the national level. Hurling a wrecking ball at Obamacare is in many ways the easy bit. The problem for the Trump administration and Republicans on Capitol Hill is what you replace it with. Next is an executive order minimizing the economic burden of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Within hours of taking office, with the flourish of his presidential pen, Donald Trump started rolling back his predecessor's signature achievement. Without a clear administration plan yet on the table, of what to replace it with. But on Capitol Hill, Republicans claim they can draft an alternative that gives more access to more affordable coverage. I don't even like to use the word replace. I like to think of it as repealing uh, the bad that's out there now and, and fixing uh, what's left over and putting new ideas in place, put some market-driven uh, ideas in place and put things in place that put patients first. For decades, health care has been a polarizing fault line issue between progressives and conservatives, and many in the Republican base have been campaigning for years for the end of Obamacare. But its abolition carries political risks, especially with poorer working class Americans who helped Donald Trump reach Washington. Nick Bryant, BBC News, New York. Now, I've been asking for your questions. Lots of you have been getting in touch with what I would call regular questions about the Trump administration. Uh, one of you said.